All right, let's go. Let's go. All right, you ready? You gonna grab that one, I'll grab this one? Okay. We're gonna be milking as a team today. Rocky, you gonna help us? Okay. Oh, what? What? Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. All right. So, actually, this is kind of funny. Uh, this is a bunch of chicory, which is uh, highly uh, medicinal, really good for you. Um, this, this field is loaded with chicory. And when I put the dairy cows in here, um, after a few days, the milk started to get really bitter, which is actually amazing because one, it's, it's, uh, that's like medicine for the cow, or I wouldn't say medicine. That's, it's just healthy for the cow. And two, it's like getting a dose of nutrients uh, that you wouldn't normally get um, right in the milk. And those bitters are actually really good for your gut. So, um, man, I made the milk really bitter, but I was just like so excited that we got um, a dose of something that you'll never get in a grocery store. The bull is guarding the milking station. <laughs> get him, Rocky. Go get him. Go get him. It's a face off. <laughs> oh, the bull is going to get you. Oh, there you go. There you go, Rocky. There you go. He's actually a really nice bull. Um, okay, Rocky. Okay, leave it. Leave it. Not fun when you're milking and the bull is trying to do his work of breeding uh, right next to you. <laughs> That's not too fun. So... Here I have my spray. Uh, I have not much left today, but that'll be enough for the day. This is the fly spray. Uh, so this is citronella oil, cedar oil, um, can be lemongrass, not this time, um, and also eucalyptus oil. Put olive oil down in there and put all your essential oils on top and then put soap in there to, um, to get that all the oils mixed into the water a little bit better to uh, I don't know what the word is, emulsify or whatever. Um, and so what we do with this is keep, we spray this on, hey Jasmine, look it. You're not being milked today. I know, you're just wondering if I have food. Um, this keeps the flies off, which keeps the tail mostly out of your face. Um, and some people, they tie the tail back but the tail is really, unless you have an ornery cow that likes to whip you, he's really just trying to whip the flies, or she's trying to whip the flies. So um, if I get the flies off, then uh, she doesn't really whip with her tail. Uh, the horse flies will come around sometimes and she gets really whippy around then. Okay, wow, he's coming, so I better get busy here. So right now, because this cow we got um, from a farm that did, they raised their cows on grain. She was definitely on pretty, fairly heavy grain. Um, so when we transitioned her over to grass, we're just trying to not uh, get her microbiome too out of whack or whatever. But um, and she's been on grass for um, a while now, a good uh, nine months or so. I mean, that kind of accounts for maybe like 1% of her total um, bulk. There's also um, black sunflower seed in here. Um, and then also sea kelp for some extra minerals and iodine. Um, we definitely are uh, wanting to make sure our cows get the iodine and stuff. And whatever they don't use, they just put it back on the pasture. Uh, normal dairy operation, you got to take all that poop around your... Uh, your stanchions and everything and you have to uh, get that back out to the field which takes a lot of fuel and everything else um, you could put it in an area that's that's higher in weeds that you don't want and then the cows will frequent that area 
and then once they leave or once you move and you move the cows off that paddock you could reseed that area with something that you do want so you got to keep your cows out of your pond especially if you want a sustainable pond with fish right now the bluegill are spawning they got their spawn beds and we don't want the cows trampling on all the spawn beds so we just have one area that the cows can get down they can drink their water this is um, this is really good water so some pond water you need to be a little bit careful um, with your cows and spreading disease and all that stuff but because uh, we just have a lot of filtration a lot of pond plants everything i mean this is this is great water so I'm not too worried about it hey you what are you doing what are you doing and because we have so many good medicinals in our pasture we're also um you know not too worried about parasites or anything and we we rotate our cows really well rocky's out of here he's like i'm done no, he's still down, down. oh <laughs> all right come on they're like oh there's two of you today avi doesn't come with me every day but she comes with me sometimes huh you gonna start helping me milk more? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, what I realized is that um, instead of bringing my goats into the same place all the time, I could just have a mobile milking station. That's what I did over there. And you wanna do that, Avia? You gotta keep it to the side so the water sucks up the straw. Um, so now we just spray the, the flies and you gotta spray the udder a little bit too. It's not just about reducing fossil fuels, but stabilizing your system. Because if the shipments ever stop, you're out of luck. You have nothing. So if you're growing your own feed, you're growing your own supplement. So in the tropics, that would be pigeon pea, uh, sugarcane tops, moringa, all these different plants that you can grow. Pigeon pea is a really good one. Um, and then uh, things like banana peels and papaya peels and the papaya seeds are actually anti-parasitical um, and they love them. All, you know, all these animals, they love these things. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Avia. Um, over here in the temperate climate, we want to grow things like a ton of mulberries. Mulberries grow wild here. So we're going to grow mulberries and coppice them and maybe even cut it and, and dry it as a, a, a feed. But we can grow uh, some corn, some good organic corn uh, for these guys. And it's not to, to give them that as a, um, a main crop. It's more just as a, a supplement. That's enough about feed. You can grow your own feed. And, but really, 99% of what her milk is from is from grass. So it's not that big of a deal it's more just to have a treat and a little bit of supplement for her health but a treat to get her in here to, to do the milking right so um yeah so what we're gonna do now is just give her a little cleaning it's basically just to give it a little light cleaning because it's so clean already i mean rarely very rarely will i come and there's any kind of mud or poop or anything on her at all so she's always just in a clean state because she's always in a, a nice clean pasture just like all the clack cowsies huh yep all right so just give her a quick little initial squirt like that i usually just milk from one side and what I like to do is, I like to put my knee, if you can see that. Um, I got my knee right here by her back leg. Um, and you know, it takes some time to get to this point to train them and just to work with them. But I have my feet back. I don't have my feet, I don't put my feet like in front. I put my feet back. Cause if she steps forward, then um, I, get, I get whacked and I, I like my feet but i put my knee there to kind of just put a little bit of pressure not a lot but it just reminds her that i'm there but if she steps at all i can kind of just block her with my hand as well um, and just remind her that i'm there um, and 
then I can get in close like this which in the winter time it's really nice to be nice and close to the cow um, the other thing I do is I, I sink my head right here I'll just rest my head right there and that let her, lets her also know that I'm there and she tends to um, not swat her tail as much uh, and you know that's the other beauty of a pastured dairy cow is they're not they're not covered in poop my goodness some of these dairy cows are just covered in poop and it's disgusting it's like you don't even want to get close to those things poor things so this is such a enjoyable experience a healthy experience um, and a sustainable experience and I'm telling you in this day and age I hope this is an encouragement to everybody um, who's thinking about a dairy cow or who's thinking about getting their cows off of grain and getting them into the pasture more um, you, yeah your milk supply might be less it will be less your milk supply will be less um, on grass but your nutrient density is going to be more. I guarantee it. Uh, you're, you're turning from quantity to quality. And I hope this is an encouragement for you guys when you see the cow, you see the, how clean everything is, um, how enjoyable it is. You have your beef cattle right here with you. This is like the highlight of their day when they're just hanging out watching, you know. Um, they love it. Here's Avia over here, you know, scratching, scratching the cows. If she moves a bit, then I just let her know that my arm is there and she, she steps back again. And they just go right to town. So, takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of work, a little bit of patience. Also when you're milking, if you've never milked before, um, and you have a brand new cow, let that calf just have the milk at first. And when you're ready, when the cow's got, the, the baby calf has got its nutrients, has worked the udders a bit, made them a little more manageable for you, then you can start separating out the, the calf at night. Um, and the mobile milking station could actually act as that. You could bring the baby calf in the mobile milking station and lock her in you know something a little more rigid than this but you know lock in the baby calf at night and the mama cow will stay right there by the calf um and then switch them out in the morning and milk uh the dairy cow milk the cow and then let them together the rest of the day um so that's another use of the mobile milking station is you can separate out the calf um at night um so if you, if you build it correctly and so there's all different ways i would say consider your land um consider your cows uh one thing is that these these cows they love to come in from the other side so i'm gonna make this a little more rigid so they're not trying to push through um and uh break break my plywood sides which are very it's very very simple it's a very simple humble build um that the cows could break they've they've broken a few things already but learning as i go um but the main thing i i really love is i just love not having a stanchion um the cow moves a little bit and i just move with her but she doesn't move that much so um most of the time she just stands in one place and it's so much easier and she trusts me um and uh no animal really likes to go in that stanchion goats are more stubborn though so i did have a stanchion with goats um our mobile milking station in hawaii was actually on a trailer and we could move the trailer around sorghum's one that uh the cows will eat so we're gonna juice we have a sugar cane press actually that um, we're gonna use for the sorghum um, we actually grew sorghum in hawaii as well 
but sorghum over here uh, I would even think if you let the wild amaranth go to seed and you take those tops I bet you that grain on the top of that wild amaranth is probably a treat for the cow the most diligence is at the end when there's just a little bit of milk left and you just gotta strip it out oh see how she tried to walk forward and i kept my hand right here i just let her know i put as much pressure as i could obviously her leg is stronger than mine but if i put the pressure there with my knee in my hand she'll she'll tend to not step forward my goodness so the one thing I like to do is I'll just take a um, little bit of diatomaceous earth and um, put it on her udders when I'm done. There's actually about 5 to 10%, I'd say more like 5% of this um, is um, sulfur. So, and the rest is diatomaceous earth, but that 5%, maybe even less of sulfur uh, this helps to keep the ticks off and it's it's as you can see I'm not it's not I've been using this for months like this and I've noticed um, a dramatic decrease in ticks all around her udders and everything um, it hasn't um, it hasn't burned my skin her skin anything like that it's very very gentle um, so and I get it all up under her here let me take this off so i get it all up right up in between here and um, that's where the, the ticks like to be a lot of times also helps stimulate milk production uh, a calf when he's uh, feeding i mean he's really going after it and stimulating those um those udders to to produce milk so those little baby calves know how to uh, get that milk production going, then might as well mimic the calves. Well, most people, they don't put their get dairy cow with their beef cow because they can't, you can't run them through the pasture like you can your beef cow, unless you have a milking station, um, a mobile milking station. And with this, all I, all I do is drag it. So this is just a prototype. Um, I do actually want to get one on wheels that I could move easier. But this one, I just put angle iron on the bottom board and uh, acts as a sled. So the angle iron slides a lot better than if it was just wood. And then I put this cattle panel up, this piece of cattle panel that's uh, bent. Uh, as you can see, it's it's got a, um, a bend to it. And she um, is able to eat in peace. So none of the other cows can get to her food um and so she's able to eat that food in peace and you can see down here i bent bent the wire just kind of shaped it around where i put the the food um feed pail and then the roof i just put flat uh i didn't have an angle on the roof or anything because i mean really when is this ever going to be on 100 percent flat ground you know, so right now it's even at an angle and it's just going to drip right off the back. So I didn't, it's, it's not fancy at all. At the end of this video, we built this so that we can get our dairy cows on good grass on a regular basis. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about grass real quick. Um, you want to move your dairy cows before they eat down uh, halfway down and you get them out before it gets too short because if it gets too short it takes longer for the grass to come back um, it, it gets too stressed and it takes longer so we don't um, you know we went I prayed about it this year and I really felt like we weren't supposed to do any brush hogging or anything and um, sure enough we got a major drought in Everybody that um, brush hogged, their grass did not come back and it was short and the ground got scorched and dried out. Usually the clovers will, will die back in the heat. Um, I mean, we were up over into the hundreds for, for days and days and usually the clover will not last. But because we didn't graze too low and we didn't brush hog, 
the clovers never went away and they're making them an amazing comeback now so you know everyone's got different styles and different methods and yeah if you're getting consistent rain and you're getting too much uh, weeds and you want to brush hog so you get a new flush of grass for the next time your cows come in like that's great but you know there's ways to do it where you don't need machinery you don't need the brush hog uh, if you graze correctly or you just pray and you watch and you figure out what to you know you think about what to do I believe we've been created we've been created to be a steward of the land um, and we don't want to put a stress on the land that's not according to its design.